Hello there. Time for Unit 2 Central European Monarchs and Russian Monarchs. Uh, we're also going to go throw in Louis the Sixteenth, King of France. A uh, bunch of different stuff we're going to be talking about in this unit right now. I'm just going to give you a brief introduction of what you need to know, when you need to know it, and kind of what this unit is going to be going over. Uh, if you look right here at the standards, this is kind of teacher stuff, but it's important that you can look back um, and understand the things that you are going to be able to do um, by the time this unit is over. So look back over this. I'd recommend looking back over this uh, when it comes time to study for the test, making sure you know what's going on um, and really making sure that we're staying on pace. We know what is expected of us as we go through, what's expected for you to be knowing by the end of this unit. A couple different objectives we're going to talk about briefly. We're going to describe the 30 Years War. Uh, we've already talked about the 30 Years War before. It's going to be a real quick and brief review, but describing what happened in the 30 Years War and more importantly, the significant influence that come as a result of the 30 Years War. Uh, we're going to talk about the growth of Central European states, so these countries located in Central Europe, as they start to grow economically, um, what is going to happen as a result of that, as they gain some more power. We're going to talk about Russia okay, and how Russian rulers are going to really use their ability and power to build a stronger Russia, uh, which is going to really dramatically impact European and world history. We're going to look at the difference between Russia and Western Europe because both are going to become very powerful, but both are very, very different while having some similarities as well. Okay, The difference between the East and the West, uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Peter the Great and all the reforms that he implemented on Russia. Uh, and then those impacts they had on Russia. A number of people were very, very proud and happy with what Peter the Great was doing. And there was a number of people, uh, Russians, who were very concerned and very upset that uh, he was getting rid of kind of that Russianness um, that was Russia for such a long time under the guise of modernization. Now we're going to explain the important climactic features of Russia, namely it is really, really cold in Russia. Um, we're going to talk about how they manage to cope with their environments. One thing you could really learn from history is never ever, ever get involved in a land war with Russia. We're going to talk about why that is. We're also going to talk about conflicts in Europe at this time period. The Europeans are going to have a lot of different conflicts with one another. We're going to explain what some of those confl or conflicts, where they come from, and why. Uh, talk about Louis and his policies and the style of his court, kind of the way he would rule everything in France. We're going to explain that. We're going to describe the disastrous wars that France tried to get in um, and why they are not beneficial. Talk about the palace at Versailles and how it's going to reflect, the or reflect that political system in in the 17th century, cases of the 1600s. We're going to talk about the palace made of gold compared to the people who are living in squander um, and kind of talk about how that reflects the system set up in France. And we're going to identify some of the major features of the palace. Those are the different things we're going to be learning. A lot of stuff to fit into a short amount of time. Should be fun. It should get going. Real briefly right now, I want to talk about the Thirty Years' War. Just a quick little review to make sure we're all on the same page. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, it is caused at the defenestration of Prague, as we've already talked about. Um, when the Catholic theologians were pushed out a window by Protestants, either caught by angels or landed in a pile of manure. Um, one of those two things is going to lead to the Thirty Years' War. Okay, this tension between Catholics and Protestants is going on. Pretty, pretty important. Lots of conflicts happening right here. Um, result, though, of the Thirty Years' War is just going to lead to the Catholic Church having much less power in Europe than it had before. No longer is the Pope kind of ruling the show, being in charge. Um, you're going to be the rule or the religion of your king. So if your king's not Catholic, the Pope really doesn't have much power. The ditch is going to set up the basis for modern Europe and the modern nation state set up in Europe the way it is set up today. Okay, if it weren't for the Thirty Years' War, uh, it's very likely that you, the Europe as a continent would look very, very different than it does today. The other important thing to realize about the Thirty Years' War is this is going to end with the Treaty of Westphalia, the Peace of Westphalia, and the two major implications that come as a result of the Peace of Westphalia, the treaty, um, this treaty, is the breakup of the HRE. Okay, the Holy Roman Empire is gone as a result of the Thirty Years' War and the Peace of Westphalia. And number two, the religious implications, namely, you are now going to be the religion of your king, not necessarily the religion you were born into. So if your king is Catholic, you will be a Catholic. If your king switches to being a Protestant, you will switch to being a Protestant as well. That is all for now. Please comment down below if you have any questions. Otherwise, get a hold of me. Have a great rest of your day.